Unitarian Universalist minister. Uh, when I started in seminary in the 80s, I wanted, at Harvard, I wanted to locate my history in terms of women, and there was no information. And I was rather surprised at this. Um, at being a relatively new Unitarian Universalist, I thought they would be ahead of this game. <laughs> but I ended up having to write uh, what became the first uh, major book on Unitarian Universalist women's history, broad scope book. Uh, this is an anthology. I worked on this with many other people. I edited and wrote a couple of the introductions. Um, it's called Standing Before Us, and it spans the time period of 1776 to 1936. And it has uh, bios and essay and writings by 50 different women. Um, so, and, and then I worked in history for a number of years, and went into, then went on and, and then did parish ministry, and now I'm back doing community ministry, and when the Margaret Fuller Bicentennial was coming up, I thought, this would be a good chance to reconnect with my historical work, and so I got involved with this. And it's been a real joy, and it, I, I lived a few blocks from here when I was started working on this book, and was working on Margaret Fuller, and I didn't know this house existed. So it's nice now that there, there's much more visibility about it. Um, Lori Crumpacker is a um, professor at uh, Simmons College uh, since, let's see, goes back, oh, since 1978. That's right. Since off 1978, and off and on since 1978. And she's now a professor of history and uh, founding director of the Simmons Women's Studies Program. And um, she's uh, designed and taught a number of graduate seminars, including the American Renaissance. And I was, when she, when she came, she was recommended to be part of this committee and be involved in the Bicentennial. And when she came and she started talking about how she viewed transcendentalism and Margaret Fuller, I got really excited because it was an expression, an understanding that I hadn't really heard articulated. She's been doing this work, reinterpreting um, and teaching about Fuller and Transcendentalism um, for some time now. And, and she described her new approach, I'm going to read this, to teaching about the American Renaissance as expanding beyond previous definitions of the movement as a literary, quote unquote, literary flowering, which is how it's been taught for years, it's been taught in literature, and uh, primarily uh, being about New England white men, uh, such as Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson. And she proposed, quote, the antebellum period was a time of birth or rebirth for important American reform movements, abolitionism, education reform, labor reform, women's rights, and utopian communities were only a few. And it was not only white men who participated. So I think that's, that's a great statement, and that's why uh, Lori is serving as our humanities scholar. Uh, this series is funded uh, in part by the Mass Humanities, and this event is the first of ten conversations. The second is tomorrow in Groton, and then after that, it's, it's about one a month through the rest of the year. So um, our website, if you didn't get one of these cards, is margaretfuller.org. We thought she would be pleased with this. Um, and, uh, and there's lots of information on there. All of the details are not worked out for all of the conversations. Some of the dates are firm, some are not. So keep looking at the website. Um, uh, at the end, I'm going to have Elizabeth tell you also about a play that's coming up. Um, unfortunately, um, I won't be here. You won't be here at the end? I have rehearsal. <laughs> oh, she has rehearsal. Okay. Then a couple of quick, tell us briefly about uh, the Margaret the Ghost. Um, this is Elizabeth Hunter. Um, this is a little different because usually when I'm telling people about this, I have to start by explaining who Margaret Fuller was. <laughs> um, the Margaret Ghost is a fantastic, really moving play uh, written by a woman named Carol Braverman. Um, I saw it when I was 16 at Radcliffe, which was the last time that it was performed before we performed it in 2006. Uh, we are reviving our 2006 production with our, our full original cast, including 
um, mm -hmm. our own magical Margaret, um, our amazing Ralph Waldo Emerson, our incredibly sexy uh, 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 Angelo Osoli. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's just, it's wonderful. And we're doing that at the First Church in Belmont where they have a gorgeous theater space, which if you've never been there before, that's reason enough to, to come to the show. Um, the dates are here on these postcards. Please take many and give them to all your friends. Um, yeah, please. Um, I'll, all right. Pass them around. Pass them around. And if you have a place to put a poster, there are also, also posters. posters yeah, here. any, you know, at your church, at your gym, at your grocery store, uh, we would love to get the word out. Um, it's just for one weekend only in June, and um, and it's just it's it, it covers um, from the streets of Cambridge to the hills of Rome, um, writing romance and revolution. It's all in there. It's all wonderful. It's a great evening. So and on and on the Saturday night of the four performances, uh, the performance will be preceded by a gala reception which is part of the conversation series. Mm -hmm. And the conversation that evening will be with Elizabeth and with the author, Carol Braver Braverman, and some of the cast members. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. please consider coming to the play and uh, possibly to the reception. Are there any questions? Speaking of Carol, this, this is Carol Braverman. Oh, this is the, yeah. she just did her pitch. This is the author of the play. So <laughs> you can talk to her, talk to her later. <laughs>